Welcome everybody to this introductory video explaining more about meditation and how this can help you. Meditation is a great way to free the mind and help to deal with mental and emotional stress. The reason I make this video is because I know for a lot of our patients, mental and emotional stress may be either a cause or a trigger for some of the physical problems and ailments that they're having. And it's not the same for them, it's for everybody. Especially in our modern world, stress has become a much bigger problem. Of course, there are different types of meditation, not always about dealing with stress, but sometimes about helping to change some of our habits or even helping to change more and manifest more for our future. However, this particular video is gonna be talking more about stress and keeping it simple about how it's something that you can start to help improve your daily life. Put simply, meditation is about bringing us into the present moment. When we're meditating, whether it's focusing on our breath, counting our movements, or even trying to focus more on certain thoughts. When we're doing this, we are focused solely on this particular part. For a lot of people, when they think of meditation, they think of this idea of somebody sitting in the dark somewhere with candles lit, but it doesn't always have to be this way. Instead, meditation is really anything where our sole focus is on one particular thing, which helps then to calm the mind from all of the clutter that goes on around us. I saw an analogy the other day, which I think really represents well how some people feel when it comes to mental and emotional stress. For them, it's kind of like having a browser running like you have on your computer, but it's got lots and lots of tabs going and there's so many things to think about and to do. Meditation is one of the things that you can do actively yourself to help control some of what's happening in there and to even, to some extent if possible, understand how you are starting to feel more mentally or emotionally stressed. Of course, meditation comes in different forms. Being in a meditative state, being present, can take various different ways. For some people, it will be the classic of being in a dark and quietened room and being alone with their thoughts or with their breath. However, some of the other ways which some people do, including myself, will be things like exercise or even focusing on some small task we have. Doing something as simple as washing the dishes or crossing a road and really thinking about everything we're doing as part of it every time we wash each dish on each side, how the water feels, how the sponge feels, how our feet feel as we cross the road, how one car sounds differently to the other ones. All of this is putting us in a meditative state where we're very present. And when we're present, we're not in the past or the future. And it's very important that we stay in the present. There are some points where we need to think about the future or remember the past. But if we're always stuck in these states, from a physiological perspective, it's very confusing for the body and the brain because the body is always here. But if your brain and your mind are somewhere else, it becomes very incongruent, creating this incoherence between the brain and the body. And of course for you, it becomes stressful because you're never here living life as you should be. Instead, you're worrying about the past or fretting about the future. So now I'm gonna go through some of the common questions that I've had and some of the, the objections which I wanna to debunk today. So in terms of who can meditate, anybody can meditate. As I just mentioned, there are various different types of meditation. If somebody starts juggling and they're doing that in a very focused manner, this is completely meditation. This is something that can be done at a very young age and in many ways with these different forms, children are quite good when it comes to meditation, all the way up to much more elderly where for some people again it's probably less likely to be juggling but then trying other ways to keep themselves present in their thoughts and in that particular moment. Some people may think this is reserved for younger people when they have more concentration. Some people may think that it's only reserved for the old and it's not something that we could be doing when we're a child or a teenager. However, there are many schools who are now teaching this to younger children, even in primary ages. If you can find time to watch TV, to browse on the internet, to read something that maybe isn't that stimulating, to even spend time talking with your friends or even socializing outside the house, I'm sure your family will completely understand wanting to do something as taking five to 10 minutes a day to try and improve yourself with meditation. And of course, this leads to the classic of I don't have time, whether it's somebody who has a family or somebody who's single, we can all again carve out that time. There's so many things that we do within our day that sometimes we don't even think about why we're doing it and whether it's beneficial or not to us. Not everything in our life has to be completely structured and ordered, but if we can add in just something small like this, it can have a very big impact in the long term. There certainly are some aspects of different types of meditation which are linked to religion, such as Buddhism. However, this is not true for all types of meditation or meditative practices to help our mind stay more centered. 
again, if you've ever been to a cinema and you maybe sat for an hour and a half, two hours, maybe even three hours, you went to see Avengers, you can probably sit for 10 minutes when you want to do some meditation. But it's about whether you want to be able to take that time. If you can't sit physically, there is some issue, then there are other positions and postures that you can take, whether that means standing or even lying down as well. I agree. To some extent, when you're already stressed, this is not the best time to learn how to meditate. In the same way that if there's a fire in my house, now is not maybe the best time where I should be going out and looking for a fire extinguisher. It'd be good if I already had it in the house. However, at that point, you still need the fire extinguisher. It may be difficult, it may not be as effective, but it's still gonna be very useful. And it's the same for meditation. It's better, of course, if we can do this in a point where we're not feeling stressed to help to prevent these problems going forward in the future. But if it is something where we're already in that state, it can still be beneficial to us. Don't worry. That's the goal of today, to give you some other tips and advice. And there's also gonna be a guide that we can send you, which has an extensive list of different types of meditation that anybody can try. So again, we come back to this point of what does meditation do? We talked about how it's something that helps to keep us in the present moment, helps to calm the mind. But when we're doing this, it means that the brain and the body are going to start to work together better. And it also means the brain is going to start to work more efficiently. When your brain is working more efficiently, it's not just going to affect your thoughts. Your brain is the controller for the whole of the body. So if the brain is working better, it can start to control those other body parts and other body functions better too. This can then lead, for many people, to improving things in terms of, say, their willpower, in terms of things of their health, in terms of their mindset. Again, we have a long list of other changes that we can see here. This is all we can really fit on the screen. But if you are starting to have this meditation as a practice, for many people, it can start to then help to improve or speed up the recovery of physical problems, as well as helping with other mental and stressful events that are going on, especially ones which have been more chronic. So like I tell my patients when it comes to chiropractic care, for them to get better and for there to be more success, Faster, there needs to be these three values. Number one, we need frequency. Much like anything, if you're practicing something and doing something more often, you will get better at it faster. Think of somebody who's playing a sport. If someone starts playing football today, they're gonna to need a lot of practice and frequency before they become a professional. Number two is time. Time is something that's needed with this frequency, with this level of practice over and over to make sure that we are having improvements. But as we have more time, of course, that's where we're gonna to start to see bigger changes. And number three, this is where we talk about consistency. So throughout this time, making sure that we are consistently keeping to this practice, because that will help us to really make sure we keep improving. In terms of how often you should do this, this really should be built around your lifestyle. As much as I would love people to start doing a certain amount of time every single day, and it could add great benefit to them, the truth is that this may be very difficult, or it may not even be feasible with their lifestyle. What I think is more feasible instead is to try and do three different times per week and to try and make sure that you're doing them for say five to 10 minutes to start with. You can progress further and do longer times afterwards, but I think that's a way to start that's a lot more reasonable for everybody's lifestyles. This is absolutely something that will and should change your mood and change your energy. When someone's meditating more, they should have more free mental space, which means they should generally feel more energetic and they should have an improved mood as the brain chemistry is working better. To understand more about brain chemistry, watch the other video that I've made about the physiology of stress, where it goes more into how stress will start to affect the brain more negatively. So today I'm gonna to be explaining two different types of meditation which are quite popular. And then if you do want to have more information, we have a guide, as I mentioned, which we can send to you, which will have a lot more information about different types you can do, and even some journaling to make sure that you're getting the best results as fast as possible. Number one, I will be talking about mindfulness. So very simply, the idea of mindfulness is another way of thinking about being present, being mindful of the actions, the movements, and the things that you're doing. Mindfulness can be something as simple as feeling and holding your own hands, noticing how the skin feels differently in certain parts, noticing how the nail feels, noticing where the joints are, noticing any tension you feel in the muscles, not just in this hand, but in the hand that's being compressed as well. This is something, as I mentioned earlier, you could also do something as simple as mindful walking, paying attention when you're going to places, really noticing about your environment, how the road feels, how grass feels different. All of these things will keep us very mindful of what's going on around us, as well as doing the same when it comes to other people around us too. 
And the other tab I'll talk about is quiet meditation, partly because this is what most people think of when they think of the idea of meditation. Quiet meditation is generally better if you can have a dark room, just because there'll be less light to be kind of invading your space. And also if you can have something to either block out sound, or if you're doing guided meditation, of course, to have that guide aspect as well. If things aren't dark enough, maybe using something to cover your eyes can be useful, just because, again, if there is light coming in, it can be interfering with that whole process. Making sure that you are preferably seated, not laying down. Again, if physically it's difficult for you to stay seated, then you can lay down. However, it's good to remain more active because if we're lying down, frankly, you're more likely to fall asleep. So if you can stay in that seated position in this darker room, and then you can either, number one, try something simple on your own, which to be honest, may be a bit more difficult, but this could be something like, say, following your own breath, feeling it as it goes in and goes out, maybe starting to notice your pulse, starting to notice other parts of the body, even noticing some of the thoughts that are coming in and out of that point. Not necessarily being angry about them or stressed by them, not judging them, but really letting those thoughts come in and out and then just noticing, noticing as they pass, almost observing them rather than really feeling them as much as possible. The other way that you can do quiet meditation, which has become very popular, is using what's called guided meditation. So an example would be, say, the app Headspace, where you listen to it, whether it's on your phone or even through headphones, and then you'll be able to, of course, follow along with the prompts and the guides they're giving you. There's also many others you can type, which again can be completely free, such as found on YouTube, and there's also ones which are found by certain trained practitioners who have sometimes even lengthier guided meditations. Especially if you're newer to meditation, this may be one of the easier ways to start. And so for those of you who know me or are patients of mine, you may wonder what this has to do with chiropractic. Very simply, if somebody is doing better in terms of their mental state, they're going to recover much faster. And if someone is going to recover much faster, it means that my work as a chiropractor, to be honest, gets much, much easier. One of the other purposes of this video is also to help the people who are more chronically stressed. Perhaps the people who haven't had a chance to go and see somebody like myself or another practitioner, or maybe have never tried something like meditation. For them, please share this with them so that they have the opportunity to try some of these simple techniques so that they can help to prevent this mental stress that they're going under, which may eventually even lead to physical stress as well. If you have any questions about meditation or other aspects of health, feel free to give us a call at 8438-9550 or email help at vitalitychiropracticcenters.com and I'll make sure that we do our best to help you. Thank you.